Hey, everybody. Welcome to Maples Memorial United Methodist Church Evening Devotion. Um, I didn't realize that this shirt was going to be quite so bright um, as it is. Kind of got that uh, Jor-El and the original Superman starring Christopher Reeve from the 80s thing going on. But it's, uh, it's good to be with you this evening. And I want to just speak with you briefly, uh, again, following in the scriptures that we had this Sunday, and particularly looking at Romans 12, too, and I'll quote it later. But I want to ask you, what made you you? Who made you you? How, how are you formed? I took a class in seminary called Christian Formation, um, and it was very important for us to talk about how our Christian faith and really kind of our identity was formed. Where, where do you find your identity? How were you formed? What were the influences? What were the things that made lasting impressions on you? For me, I grew up in Prentice County, Mississippi. Grew up out in the country uh, and enjoyed my life immensely. We always had plenty to eat because we had cows and pigs and chickens when I was younger. And we always had a big garden. I remember pulling corn and being itching from getting in the corn patch. Um, I can remember um, shelling purple hull peas and butter beans as a boy. I didn't have to do it very often because I didn't like the to get the, I really didn't like the butter beans getting up underneath my fingernail. Uh, and they were pointy on the end, and I didn't like those. I'd much rather snap beans. I love to do the snap beans. And I was really good with the purple. I didn't mind my fingers turning into purples. Um, I remember sitting on top of a um, hand-cranked ice cream mixer. And I had to sit on, I always thought everybody had to sit on ice cream to make it, but no, the latch that held down the crank was broken. I sat on it enough that it would engage the gears and turn it. So when I was a little boy, I'd sit there and my granddaddy would crank it. I remember going fishing and eating catfish. I remember watching Hee Haw on Saturdays and having to ooh, listen to Lawrence Welk with my grandparents occasionally. I really enjoyed um, watching TV as a kid. and I was formed by listening to... Um, uh, the old timey gospel hour on Sunday mornings uh, with the gospel jubilee by the Florida boys. Jubilee, jubilee, we're all going to a gospel jubilee. Um, I remember going to country singings as a kid, vacation Bible school. Um, still remember vacation Bible school at Oak Hill Baptist Church in Prentice County, Mississippi. And uh, Brother Joe McIntyre and Brother Chuck Hampton were the pastors, and um, I was forever formed by those two guys. Chuck Captain, I can say, proud to say, is a friend and a fantastic teacher and a church men church pastor mentor and interim pastor and does pretty much jack of all trades and uh, just a great guy. I was formed by those two men. I was formed by my parents and and the religious upbringing. I was I attended. Um, Asbury United Methodist Church as a child and was formed by Martha Parker's Sunday school class and Mr. Wildman's Sunday school class. I was formed by my interaction with um, Hal Hall's grandfather, Mr. Victor Hall, who was one of the most biblically literate men I ever knew. I was formed. I was formed by my grandfather, who taught me to love boxing. We don't teach folks to love boxing much anymore, but uh, particularly maybe here in the Deep South. But man, my granddaddy loved watching boxing, and we'd watch that on NBC on Saturday afternoons. I was formed by learning to watch horse racing on Saturdays with my daddy. Daddy liked horse racing a little bit, but we got these little cards from the Big Star in Baldwin, and they had these special races, and and if you got if you got the card matched up with who won the race, then you got a certain percentage off your groceries the next week, I think it was, or maybe $20 or something like that. And we'd watch horse racing because of those little coupons. We pinched pennies and were careful about stuff like that. We sat up at night and uh, would keep um, Cunningham's and Baldwin gave away uh, quality stamps, the red quality stamps. 
And we'd save them all up, and then we'd sit down one evening and put stamps and stamp books, and then we could go to the stamp store in Tupelo and buy things with our books of stamps. And I like doing the hundreds and the fifties. We always made Daddy do the ones. <laughs> I was formed by my parents. I was formed by my upbringing. I was formed by the religious people in my life. I was formed by the churches that influenced me. I was formed in good ways and bad ways. I was formed by a country culture that asked the question, have you eaten? That was the first word of concern is, have you eaten? Years later, I would learn that as uh, families and cultures changed from scarcity to plenty, uh, the questions changed. In places where it's the most scarce food, people would say, have you eaten? Then as it became more plentiful, they'd say, did you get enough? And lastly, they'd say, when food became plentiful, we would say, did you enjoy it? I was raised in a culture that taught that food meant love. Somebody died, you brought food. Somebody got sick, you carried food. Somebody had a wedding, you brought food. Somebody had a birthday, you brought food. You have a gathering at church, there's got to be food. And there were always the certain things that were always at the, at the family reunions and the fifth Sunday dinners on the grounds. So there was always a... A, there was always a pink, fluffy thing. There was always a green, fluffy thing, congealed salad. Um, and there might, just might, be a pound cake. There was casseroles, fried chicken, always. Watermelon. I remember sitting over at my Uncle Arliss's and uh, Junior Scott's when we'd have my grandfather's family gatherings and sitting out over there and Aunt Bessie always brought pickled beets. I never liked pickled beets, but she tried to get me to like them. But I remember sitting around with old men, my Uncle Arliss, my granddaddy, Pat Prather, sitting around with all those old gentlemen Junior, Scott, and some of us younger ones, and those men would be pitching washers, pitching washers. I was formed in a certain particular way, in a certain particular setting, by a certain particular culture. How were you formed? I want you to pause for a moment and think about the influences on you. How were you formed? Maybe in good ways, maybe in bad ways. I was formed by a culture that taught me there's some things you just don't talk about. I was formed by a culture that that maybe taught me wrong things about people and judging people. I was formed by a pop culture as I grew older that often emphasize the wrong things. I was formed by a culture that led me to believe that um, status, and what you may have, what type of clothing you may have, and the, the brands on your clothing make a difference. And where you fit in to society, where where you fit into the political structure, where you fit into being from the right family, in the right place, in the right neighborhood, in the right town. And I was formed by a culture that said, accumulate all you can, enjoy all you can. And at some point, the acquired culture came into conflict with my baser culture, the culture that was born into me. What were the cultures that were born into you that you accumulated, your family of origin culture, what you were taught at one point versus what you came to know later on? You see, for me, I, I as I have gotten older, 
have harkened back to my home culture because I've seen the value in it. I've grown. I've embraced it. And I love it. I love the lessons I learned as a child about loving Jesus first. I love the lessons I learned at church. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. I love the lessons that I learned in Mr. Wildman Sunday School. He taught me more Bible as a 12, 13, 14-year-old boy than I ever could imagine. Other people work the other way. What you were taught as growing up, the lessons you learned, the culture that was born into you, the way you were formed younger, may be the thing that you don't want to run back to, but rather embrace the culture you've grown into, which may be better. So what makes a culture that forms you better or not? What makes us be in a place where we should prefer one way of being and one way of seeing the world, a, if you like a better word, a paradigm or a worldview, what makes one better than the other? And the only thing that I can think of is to what extent and how much it is Jesus-centered. How much and to what extent it is Jesus centered. I was blessed to grow up in rural, middle class, lower middle class, Prentice County, Mississippi. We do people that are better than just about anybody with great hearts and great souls and great spirits. My family on my mama's side, cousins, amazing people that influenced me that just Helen and Junior Scott and, and my mama and my granddaddy just great people Lois and James Davis on, from my daddy's side people that connected to me as a kid My cousins like Tammy and Betty Jo growing up. Brother Joe McIntyre. Brother Chuck Hampton. I'm at Asbury United Methodist Church, W.T. Baxter. And men like Ricky Bishop, who was my choir director when I sang with Baldwin. Baldwin and Asbury were a, a charge, a two-point charge, and we were their sister church. We were the little church on the charge. And I got to sing with Ball and First Church a lot and do things with them. I can never forget going to Jackson to watch the Ball and High School Bearcats play in the state championship in basketball and watch um, Tim Bender. I mean, Tim, not Tim, uh, Tim, um, oh, forgot his name. Sorry, went blank. But to watch uh, Tim Jumper uh, lead the Ball and Bearcats uh, along with um, – Jason McKay uh, to a state championship. And I went down and uh, I remember going with Ricky Bishop and a whole group of men, Steve Lampton, good Christian men, the men's group at Ball and Men's Club. Just being influenced by those folks. And I am blessed because my parents put me in a place where I was heavily influenced by people of deep faith and grew and was changed. And I, I grew up in a culture where I was steeped in it. Now, it's not to say that everybody followed that culture. I mean, a lot of folks in the same situation grew up the same way I did, made other path choices. Why, I don't know. But for me, I made the right ones, I think, for the most part. And I've ended up pretty much where I think God wants me to be at this moment. And I have been eternally blessed uh, by the gift of faith that my family, Lawrence and Patty Sparks, 
Pat and Inez Prather gifted into me every day. One thing that kept me going all those years was remembering that my grandmother, Inez Prather, I'm her Inez Prather, was praying for me all the time. Nothing like a praying grandma. What formed you? How were you made? Is it something you want to embrace and remember? Is it something you want to reject and move away from so that you can move closer to Christ? In the end, family, culture, where and how you were raised and born only matter to the positive to the extent that they reflect the values of the kingdom and are centered on Jesus Christ. How do I know that? Because Romans 12, 2 says this, Be ye therefore not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. We can either be conformed to the world or we can be formed by Jesus. We can be formed by the holy community. We can be formed by the community of God, the kingdom of God around us. We can be formed by great and wonderful and holy people in our lives that shape us. Oftentimes people get heartbroken because they look back and when they grow up they realize that some of the people that they idolize is not as idol idolizable. Is that a word? I just made it up if I did. Somebody give me credit in the dictionary. But they're not as idolizable as they thought they were. Not as good as they thought they were. And so here's what I'm here to say. Here's what I want to tell you about that. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you were strongly influenced in being pointed towards Jesus Christ, don't let somebody else's failings, personal failings, that you only learn about later, pull you the wrong way. Remember the direction that they were trying to point you in. The good points. Maybe they were awful to somebody in your life. Maybe they didn't respond correctly. Maybe they failed in great ways. Maybe they were a horrible person. But did they push you closer to Christ? Hold on to that. Be honest about who they were. But we're all failed creatures. We all are broken. We all have made mistakes. Some more horrific than others. And some by which we, it is almost impossible to forgive. But don't reject the message. Don't reject the message just because of the failings of the messenger. Do not be conformed to the values of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. I hope you are gathering these things up in, up in your heart. Gathering these things up. These truths, these things that God is trying to teach you over your lifetime. And you're storing them away in your heart, as they said Mary did, about things that people said about Jesus. That you're saving them up. That you're holding on to them. Maybe you came from a place that's not good, but you're making a great go of it now. Maybe you came from a place that was great, and you wandered, and now you're coming back. Maybe you came from a great place and never left. Wherever you are, take one step closer to Jesus today. Let your world be conformed to him. Make choices about where you invest your time, where you invest your money, where you invest your life, who you let influence your children, how you let your children be influenced, and even priority decisions that you make for your children that may seem odd to the world. Make those in light of the kingdom. Don't be conformed be transformed. You know what the transformation does? It changes our minds. It renews our minds. It changes them. That means we will think and act differently about what's going on around us. Choose good over evil. And never quit being formed to the image of God. Thanks for tuning in today. God loves you and so do I. And my prayer for you is this, that may the God of all grace and the God of all glory bless you and keep you and grow you one step closer today to the image of Jesus. Amen. God bless. Have a great evening.